Hi, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the new dentist coach show, podcast show. This show is so new, I'm still figuring out what's the name of it. But, but anyway, hey, this is a, a show where people, dental students, new dentists, ask questions about getting into dental school, why they're in school, how to get through, tips on uh, applying to residency, and then also life after dental school and after residency. So be sure if you have questions or you have uh, topics that you want us to talk about more, make sure you should send, send me an email right here at newdentistcoach at gmail.com. Newdentistcoach at gmail.com. Also, be sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, called Dr. Darwin Speaks as I post new videos on a weekly basis, either two or three videos a week, so you don't want to miss them. And I don't, I don't want you to miss this information that we're sharing. And today, it, today's information that we're sharing is um, I'm gonna be talking to a current dental student who's applying or getting ready to prepare herself to apply to oral surgery. So today's uh, topics are gonna be about a couple of tips on, on how to become the best candidate for an, or, an OS uh, residency, all right, to apply to OS residency. And uh, today we have uh, uh, student Dr. Jamel, who's here. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I love your smile. Not everybody can see your smile, but we love it. We love it from here. So <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself. What year you are at school? Yes. And uh, where you're I, from? I am currently... Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm currently a rising D2, so we're in our summer session right now. Um, I'm originally from New York. I, I'm, well, I was born in New York, and I'm originally from California, and then I moved to D.C. to attend Howard, Howard Dental School, and I'm really enjoying my time here. I'm making a lot of new friends, and I'm enjoying what I'm learning. This is we actually are in operative this summer, and it is so exciting to be doing um, uh, clinic work, and then you can actually see it, all the knowledge coming together, so it's really exciting. Yes, it is an exciting time, and I, I think yeah. you have a classmate who's a friend of mine, who's actually my one of my mentees, Dr., uh, student Dr. Kwame. You know yes, 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 I do. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, maybe you might you might have better luck in having him uh, call me. Tell him to call me back, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you're rising second year, D two, and you're mm -hmm. thinking about oral mm -hmm. surgery, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. So, so tell me a little bit about like why you're thinking about oral surgery. What what about oral surgery that are you kind of leaning towards? Because now's a good I... time too. Well, off the bat, I like, I love oral surgery because I love how expansive a field it is. I love how you can do so many different things in that field. You can do surgery, you could do um, like implants, you can do uh, extractions, you can be um, restoring people like cleft lips and all that. You could do cancer. So I just love how there are so, such various options for anyone who wants to be an oral surgeon. Um, I think that it's, you're, to me, it seems like it would never be a dull moment. There's always something new to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like about it. Nice. Okay. So with that being said, what, what, what is your concern? What's the problem or, or the challenge that you're facing right now as, mm -hmm. you, as you enter your D, D2 year as far as how it relates to oral surgery? What's the, what's the question? What's the issue that you're having right now? Well, my question includes just how do I set myself up to be the best candidate that I can be? Um, just what steps should I be taking? What little tips do you have? And also, like, um, how do programs see res uh, research experience um, with, for an applicant? Like, do they rate it, rate it highly, or would it just depend on a program that is research-based, you know? So those are my two main questions. Okay. 
So with those questions, I, I, I think we've got some, uh, I know we've got some tips that are going to be very, very helpful. So get your pen and paper ready. Yeah, that's right. Me. And what's, what's lucky is that, you know, we, we're recording this so that you can refer back to it and uh, other people that are listening can uh, refer back to it also. Mm -hmm. so, so tip number one on how to, how to be the best candidate for oral surgery residency as part of the application process. Number one is, your grades, right? You mentioned mm -hmm. that already. Mm -hmm. This past yeah. year was probably one of the most important years for all of those people that are in your class that are thinking about specializing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Grades, 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 grades. The grades that you get, the GPA that you get your first year, pretty much is the foundation and carry that carries a lot of weight into your second, third, and even your, your, your last year of your dental school. Why is that? Is because yes. most of those classes are very heavily weighted as far as like your biology, anatomy, physiology, bi biochem. All those courses, all those classes are like six, seven, eight, nine, ten credit hours, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the grades that you get in those classes that are like that are going to be the grades that are going to be carrying you through into second year, carrying you into third and fourth years as well. So grades are yes. very, very, very important. Um, it's a little bit mm -hmm. different than it, how it is on the medical side. Medical side, I've heard stories where uh, uh, some physicians say, you know, your first and second year of medical school, your grades don't matter, pretty much because mm -hmm. some of the schools are like pass fail or pass, high pass, honors pass. So there is no yeah. grade, you know? There's no grade that's going to uh, reflect your on your GPA because in medical school now it's, you know, some schools are not even using GPA, but dental school is not the case. There are still a lot of programs that have uh, a, a ranking and also a, you know, give you grades, which also leads to your GPA. So you already okay. know. For oral surgery is one of the top three programs, actually top four programs now, as far as mm -hmm. specialty programs that people want to get into and people want to do, right? You got oral surgery, ortho, mm -hmm. pedo, and endo. Okay. All right. So you're one of those top, top four. So very, very competitive, which means uh, they want to see who, who are the top people in the class. Yeah. That's where your grades comes into play. So one of the things mm -hmm. I shared with one of your classmates, uh, student Dr. Kwame, was, you know, he's interested in pedo. I told him the first thing, I told him last, I think it was August, mm -hmm. I said, look, Doc, this is what you got to do. You've got to get all A's and B's, hopefully more A's than B's, because mm -hmm. of the weight that your grades will have on your GPA that's going to carry you through the next couple of years. So, yeah. Hopefully you've paid attention uh, this past year and really focused mm -hmm. on doing the best you can, keeping the distractions away. Same thing second year. Mm -hmm. Be building off that momentum, primarily because yeah. of this. This is the reason why. Again, residencies for oral surgery, they want to they want the top five percent, probably even less than that, mm -hmm. of those people in the class. And typically what program directors have used as a measuring rod or a thing that kind of weeds people out is a GPA, right? Mm -hmm. Three, mm -hmm. five, three, six, three, seven or higher. If you don't have that night, night it's done Yeah, mm -hmm. for the most part. Forget about what people say about holistic uh, admissions and uh, all that applies to dental school. That's totally different or somewhat different. Mm -hmm. I don't say totally different, but somewhat different mm -hmm. when it comes to oral surgery residency, okay? They're still very much kind of old school with regards to they want the top people in the class, but it is only just one factor that they look at as part of the process. So you got your grades. So you got that. So that's, okay. that's the first tip. Second tip mm -hmm. is the board exam, not the dental board mm -hmm. exam. Mm -hmm. But the basic science exam that the medical students take. Yeah. Right now, you're shaking your head, so I think you know what I'm talking about. Right now, that exam, yes. oral, yeah. 
Oral surgery has their own component of that exam that they use specifically and exclusively to see where you are uh, as, a, as a candidate. So mm -hmm. the tip for that particular exam is this. You've got to take that exam as soon as possible probably more so after your first and second year because all that information, that basic science information mm -hmm. is fresh. <laughs> yeah. It's wet. It's dripping wet. It's, it's fresh off your uh, cerebellum there, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's all information that you know that you're familiar with. And that's the time that I've heard from, from most um, uh, applicants for surgery and from the program directors. That's probably the best time this is the best time for you to take that ex that exam. Okay. Also, taking Quick question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. How long does how long does the that board exam last? So if I take it now and I get a score that I'm happy with, how long would that exam last me? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I mean, but there there are people that have taken it in dental school that are that are D fours had to take it again they go to residency had to take it again mm -hmm. because they wanted to improve on their score I, I i'm not sure as it relates to um you know the time period i don't know mm -hmm. if it's three years i don't know if it's five years i don't know if it's seven mm -hmm. years. but that's something that you're going to have to research yeah as it relates to the actual exam and how long those board scores last or how long they're good for okay. all right mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to set you up with somebody who can talk to you more specifically about how they, how program directors will look at that score and what the time period mm -hmm. they have. Cause each program could be different. Somebody could say two years, somebody can say three years, somebody can say five years. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. But the main mm -hmm. thing is taking that exam early so that while the information is still fresh, also being able to now, all right, now I see what the structure of the exam is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You take it early enough so that you can also take it again if you need to. And most mm -hmm. people do because they want to uh, get a better score. And I think mm -hmm. right now the scores, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me, but I want to say something like a 61 or 62, 63 or something like that as far as that okay. particular score. Uh, it's on a little bit of a different type of uh, scale that we use for your national dental boards, part one and part two. But mm -hmm. you actually get a raw score. It's not a pass fail. You get a raw score. And programs yeah. are looking at that raw score. So that's what you want to concentrate on. So mm -hmm. take it early. Give yourself the, uh, the opportunity to have all the information that's fresh in your mind. I know at some schools, dental schools, dental students are taking uh most of those some of those classes with the medical students and vice versa so that could be a plus for you so take it early so that you come become more familiar with the exam the material so that you give yourself another opportunity to mm -hmm. better score the second okay time. okay so that's the second the second tip on being a better candidate the third tip mm -hmm. deals with your question about research mm -hmm. So yes, right now is a good time for you to be involved with, le with research. You're going into your second year. You've got one, two, three more years, potentially, that you can get yourself on a research project that someone is doing at, at the school, uh, mm -hmm. preferably maybe even over there in the oral surgery department or the OS residency. We've, we've had some residents, um, uh, GPR residents that have applied to uh, the Howard Oral Surgery Program. So I know they have a program there. So you may even want to go over to the Oral Surgery Program, introduce yourself, meet with some of the residents, mm -hmm. and ask them what kind of research projects they're working on or some of the faculty members, what they're working on. Now, right now, it's a great, great, great time for you to get involved with it because it allows you at least three years for you to get involved, but also to get something either published or get something established to the point where you're getting ready to publish. Okay. And that, and it doesn't, it does not hurt. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's mandatory. And I don't think most program directors will say it's mandatory, mm -hmm. uh, but it's helpful. Mm -hmm. 
again, okay. again, you want to be as a candidate, you want to put position yourself and do things that maybe other candidates don't want to do or what they're not doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. You want to, you, you know, you want your application and your candidacy to kind of pop off the paper, just pop off when they're, when they are eventually uh, reviewing your, your credentials and your documents. So, if you've got a couple of, uh, of, of research uh, topics and, and things that you're involved with, kudos, thumbs up, and that's how you kind of separate yourself from this competitive pack. So research, again, start early. I would dive into uh, any of the faculty members that are teaching you all. Even, even if it's coming up the second year, um, befriend them. Tell them about your interest. You may have a topic or something that you're thinking about that you're interested in that maybe someone at the school can start to um, help you develop, um, help you develop uh, a name, a title, or, or, or a presentation, or a topic, or even a project that you can work on for your abstract. They may be able to help you start mm -hmm. that process of an abstract, okay? Um, okay. So that's, that's the third thing. That's the third tip that's going to help you be a better candidate, the research. And I think the last one, the fourth, uh, the fourth tip that is going to really help you be a better candidate is an o, uh, or amount maxillofacial in externship. Mm -hmm. Got to do an externship yeah. while you're in dental school. Some type of externship. Now, this is where you have to do a little homework and you're going to do, have to do some networking as well. All right? Because mm -hmm. there are many, just like there's many OS programs throughout the country, there are, each of those programs probably have an externship that's associated with the school or with the, uh, with the program itself. So you want to yeah. do a program, an externship, at one of the locations or one of the programs where they're, they are very well, um, widely known. And there are a couple of programs that I, I just kind of remember talking to um, one of my colleagues who's an oral surgery residency director. She mentioned uh, there's a program, I think LSU has a great externship. Uh -huh. um, oh, man, there's another one. University of Maryland has okay. an externship. And again, I'm sure that you can, uh, as part of this, as part of you becoming more familiar with the whole application process and being a better candidate, you know, you, you may, I would suggest that you go, and this is a bonus, I, I suggest that you go on to the Amos website. Amos is the mm -hmm. American Association of Oral Masculine Surgeons. They have yes. their own website. Where they have a listing of not only all the programs, but they also have listings of all the program directors where they're located, mm -hmm. descriptions of the program, are they four years, are they six years? But they also have information about externships or how people can get involved in participating in those types of externships. I would also look at your school, especially if you have an oral surgery program there. You want to find out mm -hmm. about externships as a dental student. I know at University of Maryland, one of the things that we had uh, for your third and fourth year is we had these things called clerkships, clerkships, where you were able to get more exposure into a, a, a smaller segment of the profession, whether it be pedo, special care, uh, geriatrics, perio, pros, ortho. And you, usually those clerkships okay. or externships were really, really competitive in the sense that you are able to spend, you know, a good portion, maybe 20 or 30, less than 50% of your clinic time in that clerkship. Mm -hmm. And again, that is also a great resume builder or candidacy, candidacy builder for you, uh, especially going into a specialty program as competitive as oral surgery. So okay. externships. So you're going to have to do some research. We're going to put you in contact with some current, uh, uh, oral surgery residents. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of former GPR residents that are 
in oral surgery right now, they can shed some light to you, uh, you know, shed some light, give you some information, but start at home, start at home base there uh, at that mm -hmm. oral surgery program that you have. And also talk to any of the oral surgery faculty that are going to be teaching you all as, as second years as well. Okay. I think those four mm -hmm. tips, those four areas right now for you as a D2 student are going to be enough for you to, for you to really concentrate on for this year coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, recap grades, uh, the CBS, C S B E. <laughs> so many acronyms, but it's the uh, basic science exam, medical basic science exam research, right? We talked about research and then externship. Externship. Okay. If you can, another bonus, like I said before, is um, you know going on to the Amos website and finding out when the next oral surgery meeting is. You need to go to the oral surgery meeting. Okay. That's a bonus. I would definitely, at some point, because you need to see what all of it kind of looks like and who's there, what they're doing, what the topics they're talking about. You may even come up with some ideas for a research mm -hmm. project, for an abstract, when you go see people doing their table clinics and their other presentations. Um, and it just really exposes you to the, the field that you're gonna be getting into. Yeah. So the sooner the better. So you okay. need to find out on the website when the next meeting is and figure out how to go between this year and before the start of your third year. Just go and, okay. and, and, and meet some people, network. You really wanna go because it's a great opportunity for you to see all the programs that are there. Mm -hmm. They will have uh, alumni sessions or alumni gatherings. And they'll have some kind of cocktail uh, slash alumni dinner and meeting and social hour mm -hmm. where you can get mm -hmm. a chance to be right next to the program directors, the residents that are in the programs, introduce yourself mm -hmm. and just start meeting people. Okay. Have, your, okay. have a blank, blank notepad, some business cards from school, and you just, mm -hmm. you're just there to network. Network. Because yes. remember, okay. it's not, lots of times it's not about, it's not about what you know and how smart you are, but it's also about who you know mm -hmm. and who they know yeah. as well. Yeah. So the only way that you're really able to exercise that is you've got to be in the same room, the same building, right, the same section of the meeting that everybody else is in so that you okay. can network and get yourself what I call out of obscurity. Mm -hmm. Out of obscurity, right? Yeah. Obscure meaning not known, no one knows who you are to the point mm -hmm. where people know who you are, you're meeting people, you know them, they know you, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. How's that sound? That sounds great. I, I got some really great advice, thank you. You're welcome. And, and, and hopefully, um, you know, that makes it a little bit less confusing. It makes it, it does. Less, less of a challenge because at least you know now, all right, these are the things, these are the four, five, or six things that I need to kind of focus on mm -hmm. to get me on the right path. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it does. That's awesome. That's awesome. Any other questions that you can think of? I'm good for now, but I definitely will call back if I need if I need further guidance. That's perfect. That's perfect. So this D two year, you know, you're gonna have some more basic sciences. You're gonna probably start a little bit in clinic, not a lot, but you'll start having some more of your clinical or preclinical stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, those classes that are that have a lot of credit hours, focus, focus as much as you can on getting the best grade that you have right now. Going into D2 year, you got to A, you got a 4.0. You just got to mm -hmm. maintain it. Yes. <laughs> you yes. got the 4.0. Mm -hmm. You just got to maintain it. Yeah. Right? So yes. going, going to it with that mentality and, uh, you know, and there's going to be some people in your class that are not going to be in the same page, not going to have the same type of drive or the same purpose. That's okay. That's cool. Y'all can hang out. Mm-hmm four year when y'all walking down getting ready to graduate but 
this D two year and this D three year, you got to continue to dig in and uh, surround yourself with people that you know that have similar aspirations. They're going to be the people that are going to be driven and that are going to want to get things done like yourself. Those are the people you want to hang out with. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, hey, guys, if you out there think that this was okay and you liked uh, what you heard uh, or at the same t- and or if you have some uh, some topics or some questions that you want us to answer and to address on the show, shoot me an email right up here at newdentistcoach at gmail.com, newdentistcoach at gmail.com, and uh, we'll, we'll get you on the show and get your question answered. Hey, student Dr. Jamel, thank you so much for uh, being on. I, we loved your question, and hopefully those tips uh, help and keep us posted on your progress. I will. Thank you. The tips are very helpful, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.